Hey guys, so today I wanted to chat about some products that are kind of tempting my no-buy. So if you didn't know, I have a product-specific no-buy going on this year for the first half of the year. Um, there are several categories that I've decided I'm not going to be buying, and so far I'm doing pretty well. There is one category where I did break my no-buy, but I'm not too upset about it because I also used something up in that category. So. I feel like it's okay. But other than that, I haven't broken any of my no-buy categories, but there are definitely some products that I want. In fact, there's a lot of makeup that I want right now, and I'm really trying not to buy much makeup at this point because we are moving soon. So I'm really trying not to bring in a whole lot of new products at this moment in time. So instead, I just wanted to talk about the products that are tempting me. This is also kind of like a wish list video. At some point in the future, I do hope to purchase these things, but I'm trying to hold off for right now. So I would say that the category I'm most excited about right now is foundation. For some reason, there are just so many foundations that I wanna buy, but I also have a lot of foundations that I really like, so I don't know why I still feel this need to try more, but I really love testing out foundations. Um, but one foundation that I really wanna try, and this one I definitely think I will purchase once my no-buy is over, is the e.l.f. Camo Powder Foundation. So this powder foundation retails for $11, and it comes in quite a few shades. I would definitely have to spend some time trying to figure out which shade would match me the best. Probably would wanna go look at it in stores as well, but I just really wanna try a powder foundation. I haven't had a powder foundation in my collection in a long time. In fact, I don't even remember. I don't know if I've ever had a powder foundation. I think I've maybe tried some samples of a powder foundation, but I don't think I've ever actually owned a powder foundation. I know that people who love powder foundation love powder foundation, like they swear by it. So I'm just kind of curious, especially in the summertime, I feel like would be a good time to finally try one. And I've heard a lot of good things about this e.l.f. one. I like how affordable it is. I know some people also enjoy using it just as a setting powder. I think that's how Taylor Wynn likes to use it. And I feel like she and I have kind of similar tastes in foundation. So, yeah, I'm just really curious about this. I might love it, I might hate it, but I'm just really curious to try it. And it's affordable, so um, I think that is probably one I will purchase later this year once this product specific no buy is over. And then there are also several liquid foundations that I'm really interested in. I don't think any of these are like brand new, but they're all like fairly new. So I did recently decide to start purchasing from Essence and Catrice. And I really, really, really want to try the Essence Pretty Natural Foundation and the Catrice, Tr <laughs> Catrice True Skin Foundation. That's hard to say. The Essence one retails for $7. I think that is probably the cheapest foundation that I know of right now. Like, it's it's getting harder and harder to find foundations that are even under that $10 price point. This is probably the most affordable one that I know of. This is supposed to be a hydrating foundation. I think this came out last year. It says it provides natural medium coverage, weightless feel for up to 24 hours, 31 shades. Yeah, I'm really curious about this. I think Taylor Wynn also really likes this foundation. And then there's also the Catrice True Skin. Now Catrice used to be available at Ulta. Unfortunately, they're no longer sold at Ulta. I think they're only sold on their website and possibly Amazon, um, at least for the US. This one, let's see, does this have a decent shade range though? Like, ooh, actually this shade range doesn't look that great. It doesn't look like the deepest shade is really as deep as it should be, so the Essence one seems to have a better shade range, so maybe that's the one that I would go for, um, just because I do try to only feature foundations that have a good like spread of shades available. This one's only available in 20 shades, the Essence one is available in 30. But this one does sound like something I would really like. Again, long wearing, medium buildable coverage, natural real skin finish. Sounds like my kind of foundation. I know a lot of people really like this one, but it sounds similar to the Essence one, at least in the claims. So again, if you've tried both, let me know which one do you think I would like better or which one do you like better? And yeah, this one retails for $18. So it's definitely a lot more expensive. Essence and Catrice are sister companies and Catrice is kind of like the slightly more expensive version of Essence, I think, at least from what I've gathered. Um, kind of reminds me of like Milani and Jordana back when Jordana existed. Milani's like the slightly more luxe drugstore brand version of Jordana. Those are two drugstore ones I'm really interested in. And then there's two kind of higher end ones. They're not like super, super expensive, but one is the LYS Triple Fix Serum Foundation. I actually was able to get a free sample of this as part of my like Sephora order recently and I loved it. I was able to get two uses out of that sample so I feel like I was still able to get like a pretty good idea of how I felt about it and I loved it so much both times I wore it that I'm 
I'm definitely planning on purchasing that at some point. Maybe in the Sephora sale in the fall, I would pick that one up. Just a beautiful, slightly dewy, but not crazy dewy, very skin-like natural finish, nice kind of just medium coverage, which is really what I'm loving lately. So this one to me, at least out of the two times I tried it, reminded me a lot of the new Kosas foundation that I love and it's much cheaper. And then the final foundation that I want, while well, we're still on foundations, aren't we? Um, the final foundation that I really want is the Tower 28 Sunny Days SPF and foundation. It's like a two-in-one. They call it a sunscreen, but it also has coverage. So, you know, I have some mixed feelings on whether that's a good way to market it or not. If it's possible to apply a full quarter teaspoon to your face and it not look cakey and terrible, then, you know, maybe it would make a good sunscreen. But I am just really, lately, I just, I know most of the sunscreens I just mentioned don't have sunscreen in them, but lately I'm really starting to prefer sunscreen or foundations that do have sunscreen in them just because I like having that extra layer of protection. Of course I'm going to wear a regular sunscreen underneath anyway, but it's just kind of nice, especially in the summertime when we're getting, you know, more sun, just spending more time outside in general. It just makes me feel a little bit more confident going outside and feeling like, like my skin is truly protected, especially because sometimes I do worry that the act of applying a foundation on top of a sunscreen could potentially like move the sunscreen around, like the sunscreen that you already applied. You're applying a liquid on top of that and I do always kind of wonder like is it going to be lifting up some of that sunscreen? Like I feel like no one really knows for sure if you know, if it does take away some of that sunscreen protection or not. So it just makes me feel better to know that the foundation I'm applying on top of my sunscreen also has sunscreen, just in case I missed any spots or just in case like my brush or my sponge kind of pushed or dragged some of that initial sunscreen around, like it's kind of filling in any potential gaps. Just makes me feel better. So anyway, <laughs> tangent aside, the Tower 28 Sunny Days, it has SPF 30 and the nice thing about this is, I mean, if you're using it as a sunscreen rather than a foundation, again, I don't really know. I'd have to try it for myself to see if you can use this as a standalone sunscreen. It comes in 14 shades, which is way more shades than most tinted sunscreens come in. So that's nice that it, it comes in a good shade range and it looks like a really good spread of, you know, very light shades as well as very deep shades and it kind of looks like an even gradient to me. So I've also just heard really good things about it. I know Andrea Matiliano and Jessica Braun both have been raving about this and uh, again, I feel like they both have kind of similar... Well, Andrea actually has oily skin and I think Jessica has more like normal to dry skin. So seems to work for a variety of skin tones. My skin does kind of fluctuate from dry to normal to combo in the summer. So I feel like it would probably work well for my skin type. So yeah, I mean, I definitely don't want to buy all these foundations at once, but they are certainly on my list of foundations that I want to try. So those are all the foundations. The next category of my no buy is concealers. And this is the category that I technically already broke my no buy by purchasing the LA Girl Pro Conceal. I bought it for a video. I wanted to film a video um, testing out like makeup that's $5 and under, which I can link for you below if you want to watch that. But um, I was really just kind of on the hunt for more like truly affordable drugstore makeup. And the LA Girl Pro Conceal, I know I'd heard a lot of good things about. It's actually what I'm wearing today. I think I like it. I don't think it's like totally changing the game for me. Like, I don't think I like it more than the e.l.f. hydrating camo, but it's still a good concealer. Like, I don't dislike it either, but anyway, that's the concealer that I bought. Mistakes happen, but <laughs> um, the other concealer that I'm really tempted to purchase, and I'm not going to until at least this no-buy is over at the end of June, the NYX Bear With Me Concealer Serum. This is the one that's been super hyped up on TikTok. Seems like a lot of people do like it. I do try to be careful with like TikTok hyped up products because sometimes, you know, like with the KVD Apple Foundation Balm or whatever it was, the cream foundation, it was really hyped up on TikTok, but then it turned out like most people actually really didn't like it on YouTube. So I do tend to trust YouTube reviews more than TikTok reviews, but a lot of people, even non-TikTok review people, seem to really like the NYX Bear With Me Concealer Serum. So I'm really curious to try this. It comes in a little pump bottle, which I kind of like the idea of that. I don't have any concealers that are in a little pump like that, but I, I, I think I like that format, assuming the pump 
works well and it doesn't like dispense way too much product. This says, say hello to 24 hour hydration. Dark circles erased, acne covered, redness and irritations, girl bye. That's what it says in the, the details. <laughs> it says medium coverage concealer in a skincare serum. Okay, my lipstick is, I, I'm wearing a red lipstick today. I didn't apply lip liner first, so I feel like it's kind of moving around. Let me touch up here. Probably should have gone in with a lip liner first, but this is a lipstick that I kind of rediscovered in my lip declutter that went up, I believe, yesterday. It's the Urban Decay lipstick in the shade Olvera. Really fun, like, red-orange color. It kind of matches my shirt, but I feel like this is a really fun, like, summer red. To me, what this sounds like is... Kind of like the new version of their Born to Glow concealer, which I really loved, but I did end up decluttering that just because the shade was too light for me, the shade that I had. So um, it, they seem to have discontinued that, but this sounds similar. That one was very thin, lightweight, medium coverage, and I do like to have a good, like, solid medium coverage concealer in my collection. I have some fuller coverage ones. I have a lighter coverage one, like the CoverGirl Clean Fresh one. Um, I guess I have a medium coverage one too. I would say the Urban Decay Stay Naked one that I have is more on the medium coverage side. Um, but anyway, this one just sounds really nice and I'm just curious to try it. So that's on my wish list. That's the only concealer that I'm tempted by at this moment in time. The next category is brow products. There are a couple brow products I'm interested in. My brow preferences have been changing lately. Ooh, I know. So I used to be a big brow, ABH dip brow pomade person. That was what I used every single day in my brows. I still have and like that product, but lately I've really been loving my Urban Decay brow blade, specifically the marker. Um, that is what I have in my brows today. That's just my favorite brow product now. And the brow marker has really quickly become my favorite way to do my brows. So now I'm really curious to try more and especially more drugstore brow markers. And one that I'm really interested in trying is the Milani Weekend Brow. Unfortunately, this one only comes in three shades. The only shade that might work for me is soft brown. Why does this only come in three shades? That seems strange to me. At least on Ulta's website, there's only three. Soft brown looks like it would probably work for me. It's hard to say, but the people who have tried the Milani one seem to really like it. And then the other one I'm really interested in trying is the NYX Lift and Snatch Brow Pen. Um, this one comes in a much better shade range than the Milani one. And I think the shade I would go for would be Blonde. That seems to be the lightest shade that it comes in. And I've heard that Blonde is actually a little bit cooler toned than the Taupe. Normally I go for Taupe and brow pens, but I think I would probably want to go with Blonde for this one. So I just think that the brow marker is a genius way to fill in your brows. I feel like you get... You can get such a natural look, but still get like the shape that you want. Loving the brow pens right now, really excited to try those, but I'll probably wait until I'm finished with my Urban Decay brow blade. And then finally, I do have two more categories that I put a cap on for the number of products that I am allowing myself to buy for the whole year. The first one is eyeshadow palettes, and the second one is lipsticks. For each of those categories, I'm allowing myself to buy five of those this year. So, so far for palettes, I've bought two. And I, def I don't think I'm that tempted to buy any other palettes. I did a video a couple months back about older palettes that are still on my wish list. Those are all still on my wish list, but I'm also not really feeling that tempted to purchase any of them right now. So I'll probably hold off on those, but I don't think I have. Actually, I will say I, I would like to try more of the Essence Six Pan palettes. I did buy the Coral Me Maybe one. That was my second palette purchase of the year. And then if you're curious, the first palette purchase... Uh, was the Flower Desert Lights palette. So those are the two palettes I've bought so far. I would really like to try more of the Essence ones. I'll probably hold off just because I don't think I need any more, but the taupe one and the nude one both look really pretty. Those are just like very basic neutral palettes, um, but I'll probably hold off on those. And then for lipsticks, I haven't bought any new lipsticks this year, so very proud of myself for that. But I do have a couple of lipsticks on my wish list right now that I probably will purchase next time I see them on sale. The first one is the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lips. I don't even know which shade I want. I just know I really want to try this formula because everyone is talking about it. Everyone loves it. It seems seems like my kind of lip product right now. I really am loving like the sheer kind of balmy lipsticks. Like I'm loving my e.l.f. Hydrating Core Lip Shine lip right now. Um, the shade Always Cheery, that's so nice. Probably would want to buy more shades of that, but um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot that I would love to buy, but 
trying to be trying to be smart here. So the Tarte Maracuja Juicy Lips sound beautiful. I would probably get like a nude shade of that. Let me know if you have any favorites in that formula. Any favorites you think I would like. And then the other lipstick I'm interested in right now is the Bite Lip Crayon in the shade Stinger. So first of all, does anyone know what's happening with Bite Beauty? Because... Their entire brand has been marked down on Sephora's website and their website, everything is 40% off site wide right now. And it's, I think they're, a lot of their products have been marked down, if not all of them, even on their website for a while. So are they going out of business? Are they rebranding? Like what's going on? Because I feel like they just rebranded not too long ago where they made their entire line vegan and... I'm, I'm just very curious to know what's going on, but maybe now would be a good time to go ahead and buy this. But the shade Stinger, it's described as an electric coral. This shade just looks so fun. It looks like almost like a neon reddish coral. Kind of looks like it might be a good alternative to my favorite Physicians Formula Healthy Lip in the shade Tulip Treatment. Maybe a little bit lighter than that, but kind of a similar, like really just vibrant reddish pink coral kind of color. I hope Bite Beauty stays stays around because I feel like they were a pretty, what, pretty well liked brand there for, for a few years. So it'd be surprising if they did go out of business, but that's all pure speculation. I have no idea what's actually going on. But anyway, those are the products that are on my wish list that are kind of tempting my no buy right now. Let me know if you've tried any of these products, if you have any insight into them. Do you think I would like them? Do you think I should skip them? I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. But thank you so much for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, um, please give the video a thumbs up. It really does help my channel out. I know everybody says please give the video a thumbs up, but it's because it really does make a big difference. So if you could take just a second to do that, it would be much appreciated. Um, also, if you're new to my channel, I'd love to have you subscribe and stick around. My channel's all about really just using what I have, keeping a curated collection, and trying to be intentional with my purchases. So if that sounds like fun to you, definitely stick around and hopefully I will talk to you again very soon in my next video. Bye.